Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. It's Agogo here. If you are new here, welcome to the gang. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. I'm so happy to see your face again. Well, technically I'm not seeing your face, but to imagine your face again. I'm happy to imagine your face again, okay? If you are here, I'm hoping you are tuning in after part one, which I have just posted previous to this video. And this is part two of my testimony of how I got a first class slash the tips in order for you to get a first class. So this video is basically about the tips, the spiritual tips and the practical tips. If you don't know, I'm a Christian and I attribute this win of mine to God. And so I cannot neglect the spiritual aspect of this because I know for me, that's what that was what fueled the practical aspect aspect and actually gave it the weight it needed in order to give me the result that I ended up getting. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, today I'm going to share some tips with you guys. If you want to take notes, you should take notes. I ain't even saying that in a cocky way. I'm saying that because I watched some videos like this a year ago and they are actually what helped me to get the first that I got. Shout out to two particular people, my friend Ife. I will link her video below and also Dr. Amina Jonas. I watched a lot of her videos and I took so many notes you guys don't even understand how many notes I took I cannot say that this is all you know just I'm a genius and all these tips are just from the stars that decided to bless my brain today or something no I am a collection of all of the experiences I've had all of the things I've heard from different people the things I've seen and I have come today to share with you what I have learned what worked for me and what I hope will work for you so let's get into it okay so going into the spiritual aspect of what I did in order to get the first the number one thing I did which I think is very very useful Useful and you should try it if you haven't is I always prayed while I studied or before I studied or after mainly before and during actually like I studied biomedical health and life sciences just in case you didn't watch the previous video and it's not easy okay it's not easy studying science is not easy so there'd be times where I wouldn't understand something I'm reading maybe I'm reading a journal paper and nothing is making sense so I would literally pray I literally be like God can you give me understanding I pray Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is our helper that's what the Bible says he has been here to teach us all things now I take all things to be all things I don't mean all things faith or all things God but all things all things I mean he's God right he knows everything so if I didn't understand any, anything I say Holy Spirit you know this so give me understanding of it and I would get understanding no cap like you need to pray in a way where you expect God to answer you that's faith faith is when you expect God to answer you when you pray so that's how I would pray every time I would pray okay I don't understand this paper I've just read give me understanding father please and then I would eventually get understanding sometimes it's immediate sometimes it's not sometimes I would then be led to watch a video that makes things make sense even the videos I watch I would always pray that God would make me watch the right videos and the videos that would make sense to me I was just very very dependent on him during the process so that's something I would definitely recommend that you do even on that same note of prayer I would pray often not even just related to like oh God help me understand this or help you understand that but just for peace like I think during the time I was in final year my prayer life is probably the best it's ever been in my entire life this was before the attack started coming like the spiritual attack started coming that I spoke about in the last video but yeah there was a time when I was praying so much and by praying I mean just spending time with God I don't mean screaming and shouting in my room I literally mean just spending time with God and it gave me a peace I think the thing I needed more than anything Thing during final year was peace and God gave me that through the time I would spend with him I used to dedicate two hours of my day to him it would always be at night because I'm a night person I'm not a morning person I'm not one of those babes who wakes up in the morning and does morning devotions I'm not a morning person I just know myself rather than trying to pretend to be that girl I know myself and so I knew that me saying I wake up in the morning and spend an hour with God was not it wasn't realistic for me because I will fall asleep but if I say I'll do it at night I stay awake very well at night you get me like it's easier for me to stay awake at night than it is for me to stay awake when I first wake up so I would spend that time with God and I cannot explain to you the depth of peace that I had in that time and I needed that more than anything so before the intelligence before the wisdom before all these things you gotta pray you just gotta spend time with God so that you have that peace that you need for such a like challenging season of your life because university is challenging if, if nobody else says it I'm gonna say it you know what I'm saying so yeah now another thing 
thing that I would do is I would pick up my Bible. Let me show you guys my Bible that I would use. The English Standard Version Illuminated Bible Art Journaling Edition. You guys should pop this if you can. I love this Bible so much because of how colorful and artsy it is. I am a very like artsy person, so I adore this Bible. I would find people in the Bible that I related to. Bear in mind, these people are real people. The Bible is not just a made up fiction book. So if I saw somebody who walked in something that I wanted to walk in, so basically somebody who was an example that I needed in this season, if I saw an aspect of their life that I know I needed right now, I would pray for that. So let me become more specific. The two people that I studied the most were Esther and Daniel. Now both of them have their own books in the Bible, so you can literally read about them now if you would like to. I I wanted the favor of Esther and I wanted the excellence that was upon Daniel. I wanted both of those things to manifest in my life during the time of final year. So what did I do? I studied those people. I studied their stories. I studied how God moved in their lives so in depth. And then after I did that, I prophesied. I prophesied the things that I would read in that book that I wanted over myself. So the favor of Esther, I can open the scriptures, the specific scriptures that I went to that I would prophesy over myself so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. Esther chapter 2 verses 15. The last line of that verse is what I would prophesy over myself and it says, now Esther was winning favor in the eyes of all who saw her. So I would read that scripture. I would study the fact that that meant that every single person who laid their eyes on Esther, Esther would find favor with them, meaning that they would treat her extremely well for no reason other than the fact that God had put something upon her that caused people to like her so much. I would read that now Esther was winning favor in the eyes of all who saw her and then I would say I prophesy in the name of Jesus that I will win favor in the eyes of all who see me and when you prophesy you gotta understand like it's not just a matter of letting words come out of your mouth you need to know where it is coming from you need to know that you are a son or a daughter of God and so therefore when you open your mouth things must come to pass because God lives in you therefore the same way weight that was in his voice when he spoke to creation and said let there be light that is also in your mouth so when I would speak I believe that those things would come to pass and so that would be an example of a scripture that I use and then like in the book of Daniel now for example I open a scripture I use Daniel a lot actually probably even more than I use the book of Esther so some scriptures in Daniel I'm not gonna break it down like I did the Esther one but like these are some scriptures I use Daniel chapter 1 verses 20 and in every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king inquired of them he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters that were in all his kingdom I use this particular verse Daniel chapter 5 verses 11 to 12 and it says there is a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy God in the days of your father light and understanding and wisdom like the wisdom of the gods were found in him and King Nebuchadnezzar your father your father the king made him chief of the magicians enchanters Chaldeans and astrologers because an excellent spirit, knowledge, and understanding to interpret dreams, explain riddles, and solve problems were found in this Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called and he will show the interpretation. And then another scripture that I used in the book of Daniel was Daniel chapter 6, verses 3. And it says that this Daniel became distinguished above all the other high officials and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him and the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. So those are examples of scriptures that I used that I would prophesy over myself. I would pray them until they came to pass I would say I pray that an excellent spirit will rest upon me or else I would even say I thank you God that an excellent spirit rests upon me because that is faith faith is believing that it's already done and even in that same spirit the fourth thing that I did is I thanked God for my first class before I ever saw it happen before I ever got my results before I ever even sat any exam I thanked God for the first class I said thank you God that I am graduating with a first Thank you that you have done this for me because you got to understand God is the God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He's already in the end. He's already at the finish line. Do you understand? So even though I'm not, he already is. So in faith, I would thank him for doing it for me already. I would thank him for giving me the first. I would thank him. And because like when you are constantly saying these things and praying to God and thanking him, it's changing your mindset. Like you may not understand, but it's actually 
actually changing your mindset to making you believe that you are capable of doing this. I wasn't just doing it for that reason, but that was the like byproduct of me thanking God. I was genuinely thanking God because I genuinely believed I was gonna graduate with a first. But yeah, because I had that mindset, it would fuel the way I study. It would fuel the attitude that I had towards my work because I believed that I was getting it and there was no two ways about it, you know what I'm saying? The fifth thing that I did was I actually believed I was gonna get a 4.2 right my aim was to get a 4.2 gpa now if you don't understand that it basically means the highest gpa that you can possibly get so a 4.2 in my university is an a plus so i believed i was going to get an a plus in every single subject every single subject and therefore in every single assignment i did i aimed for an a plus in the standard in which i wrote it because i believed it and something that i've learned even from that experience is if you aim for the sun you will at least at least get to the moon. But if you only aim for what you can see or aim for what seems plausible to you, you won't even get close to it. You wouldn't even get close to the sun, do you understand? So even though I knew I had never ever, I've never even gotten a 4.0 GPA before, right? But I, I was like, do you know what? If I believe and I genuinely sincerely believe that I was capable of getting it, it made me work as though I was going to get one, right? If your aim is for an A+, I promise you, that there will be a difference in the standard of your work compared to if your aim is to get a C or if your aim is to get a B, right? Even if your, a, your aim is to get an A plus in contrast to an A minus, you will see a difference in the standard of your work. And so that's what I did. I genuinely believed that I was going to get a 4.2 GPA, which is the absolute highest I could get. And because I believe that it fueled the way I worked, it fueled how I studied, it fueled the amount of time I invested into my work. And I genuinely believe that's one of the reasons, that's actually one of the main reasons I graduated with her first. I actually had a sheet of paper on my wall with all my exams and all my assignments that were due so I could keep track of them. And in the corner of that sheet, I had written four points. 2.2 GPA so every single day I would look at that sheet I would see 4.2 GPA and I would remember what my aim was I would remember what my goal and my objective was so that's something I actually highly 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 recommend so those are the five spiritual tips that I have for you and also like I said in my last video know your why that's a bonus tip know your why if you have not watched the last video go back so that you understand what I mean by that now on to the practical side of things so one of the main things that I did is I I had a daily checklist, right? I had a daily to-do list. It was kind of like, let me try and show you, right? This is the academic diary that I have bought for 2021, 2022. Even though I'm currently not in university, I bought one anyway. So see how this is divided. This is Wednesday and this is a Thursday. And it's divided into time. So what I would do is I would write out the things that I need to do on a given day. The actual one that I had, it didn't actually have these type of things. As in, it didn't have timestamps. So I would just have in a given day things written that I needed to get done, right? Now, this is the actual one that I used. It just says, um, live for today. Amen, that's a message in itself. This was an example of my thing, right? So I had written here, this was Monday the 5th of April, medical imaging, MCQ, watch lectures and write three questions. I wrote down everything. I didn't just write the things I needed to get done academically. I wrote down everything I wanted to do in a given day. Not everything, but the main thing. So I had drink coffee written down. I had a Zoom call, a leave card Zoom call that I had written down. I wrote read one paper for advanced pharmacology of cancer and take notes. And then I had edit video this evening. Now on the next day I had written attend morning lecture. Sometimes you don't be attending. <laughs> Finish this thing for the cancer module. Another thing I had written was create PowerPoint for this module, etc., etc. So I had my days written out and I would check them as I went along. As you can see, I had checks I had ticks beside everything so that I could keep track of what I was doing. And to me, that was probably one of the most important things that I did that actually contributed to me getting my first class degree because I was very organized. I found it very satisfying to be able to tick things off. So that actually motivated me to get the tasks done. Another thing that I did was I went by this thing called the 20 minute rule, right? So it means if you struggle to do something, just tell yourself, okay, I'm just gonna do it for 20 minutes and that's it, right? So if you're if there's something you're procrastinating about literally just tell yourself I'll literally just do it for 20 minutes and then I'll be done and that's it and what I found by using that 20 minute rule is I got stuff done so much faster because instead of saying oh I'll do it later or oh that's gonna take me ages something I've learned is the hardest part of a thing is the beginning the hardest part of a task is starting it so if you just literally lie to yourself because most of the things that I would do I knew they weren't gonna take me 20 minutes it would take me an hour maybe even more 
times. But if I tell myself, I will just do it for 20 minutes, all I need is that 20 minutes to get me into the zone. And then after that 20 minutes is over, boom, I'm suddenly in the zone and I don't want to stop. So that's one thing that I did. I applied the 20 minute rule. Another thing that I did was the two minute rule. Now the two minute rule is for procrastination, right? Cause I really didn't want procrastination to be the enemy of me getting the first class. So what I would do is I would actually apply this rule, which is called the two minute rule. And it basically means that if any task that you need to do will take less than two minutes or max two minutes, you should just do it immediately. Rather than saying, oh, I'll do it later just do it immediately and doing that actually eliminates like things that build up over time so like for example if i know that i need to put this bottle of water in the fridge just an example it's only going to take me one how many seconds to do this so instead of me procrastinating and looking at a bottle of water and be like oh i'll take it all the way downstairs later i'll just be like it's only gonna take me less than two minutes, just do it now. And that's what helped me to eliminate a lot of procrastination of small things, that as well as a 20 minute rule. So those are two major things that I did. Another thing that I did was I actually used the marking scheme religiously, as in religiously use the marking scheme. I would find the marking scheme, if I didn't have it, I would email the lecturer or the professor and ask them, could I please have the marking scheme? Or can I, if they don't have one, I would ask them what is the basis by which you define differentiate A's from B's plus from C's from D's. So whenever I would do an assignment, I would use the marking scheme literally as a guideline to how I meant to write it. The marking scheme will literally tell you how to get an A, how to get a B. It will even tell you the difference between a C and a D. Like if you see your assignment and you don't think it's worthy of, a, of the grade it got, look at the marking scheme and you will probably understand why you got the grade, the grade that you were given. So that's something I would highly, highly, highly recommend. Another thing I would say is ask your lecturers for feedback when you get anything less than an A plus, right? If you want a first, you gotta aim for the absolute highest. So you need to aim for an A plus in every assignment. It doesn't matter if you get one or not, but you have to let that be your aim. So whenever you fall short of it, ask your lecturer, ask the person who marked it, what made me go wrong? Ask them for feedback because if you don't, you can make that exact same mistake in the next assignment or even if not in that module, you can make the mistake in an exam for a different module or in an assignment for a different module. So asking is just, it's part of progressive growth. Like rather than being upset with the grade you got, see it as, a, as an opportunity to grow, an opportunity to learn and an opportunity to develop your skills and develop your ability. So yeah, I would highly recommend doing that. And when it comes to writing essays, I would say make your essays timely, right? If you can make reference to anything that is happening in the current time or any advancements that you know of right now, make them timely. I would mention the COVID-19 pandemic during the time because at the time it was really, that, that, that was the main thing on everyone's mind. So if I could bring that into an essay or tie it into, cause I study science, so talking about a virus is very fitting. So if there was any way I could bring something I was studying into that, I would do that because it makes it clear to the lecturer that I'm actually interested in this subject and I have done my extra research. You need to show that you have done extra research. If you wanna do really well in essays, you have to show that. Another thing that I would even do is I would make sure to critically analyze, critically read and critically think whenever I would do an essay. I think the biggest mistake people make entering final year is thinking that you can work to the same standard that you worked in first year or second year. It's not like that. Critically thinking is literally what differentiates final year from the other years of college. So what I would do is I would literally, learn, I taught myself how to critically think. I watched YouTube videos. Dr. Amina Jonas was the goat for me when it came to critically thinking because she taught me how to critically analyze a paper, how to understand different types of questions, how to differentiate different types of things. So I would highly recommend you guys watch her videos if you need that because she is an academic herself and her videos are literally incredible. Also for essays, I would say all Always use diagrams they demonstrate your understanding and professors literally love to see that so always use diagrams and lastly when it comes to essays what I would also say is get a referencing software I personally was using one I didn't have time to manually reference I'm not gonna lie to you like if the convenience is there why won't I use it so I reference everything with a referencing software and I made sure that for every assignment I did I would reference at least 30 um, times at least 30 times if the assignment was 
small I would just reference as much as possible so that I could show that I had external reading and so I did a lot of external reading you cannot get a first without extensively doing external reading so that's something you can't neglect and I stress that you do if you want to get the grade that you want to get now when it came to my thesis some tips that I have is start your thesis slash your dissertation early I decided to start it early like it wasn't like as soon as the opportunity started because I didn't understand the thesis but once I had a bit of an understanding I started writing for it I started researching it I started doing all the external type of study I needed so I could fully comprehend the subject that I was writing about and the subject that I was researching so yeah start it early another thing I would say is if you know somebody in the year above maybe they do a similar course to you ask them to proofread your work ask them to look over your like your dissertation or your thesis ask them if they have any advice if they understand it. they say one thing um, about these things is if you can explain something to somebody who doesn't know the subject at all it means that you have mastered it well so if it's somebody who's not even in your course but maybe they're in a similar field or they're just in college in general you should ask them and that's something that will help you to know where your fallbacks are on for example if they don't understand something the chances are the person that's marking you will not understand it either so definitely pay attention to them and any tips that they can offer you in order to get a better grade and the likes of that I would also say email professors for advice if you want to do well you need to ask questions ask them either in lectures or by email ask them what can you do to get a better grade or even if not in general just ask them what they look for in the students that they give an A plus to or something it doesn't matter if you look like a lick ass just do it okay it's literally just it's literally just a sacrifice right forget the fact that you're super duper cool forget it just ask the questions you need to ask so that you can get the grade that you want okay one of the last things I would say is keep telling yourself even when you're tempted to give up it's only a short-term period of suffering right because you need to suffer okay you need to suffer you need to remind yourself that this is short term right it's a short term you are not going to be suffering forever it is six months of suffering for a long-term reward I told myself I'm only in final year for X amount of months right compared to me having this degree attached to my name for the rest of my life I can suffer I can be challenged I can be uncomfortable for a few months if it means I have a long-term reward that is going to be fulfilling and it's gonna be worth the sacrifice worth the pain worth the effort so keep telling yourself that every time you're tempted to give up refuse to you have to refuse to give up this ain't even a motivational talk I mean this from the heart you have to refuse to give up when it comes to something that you want I know people that gave up and they didn't end up being happy with the grades that they got or the degree that they got but I just told myself I refuse to give up because even if even if I don't end up getting the first even if I don't end up getting the grades that I want even if I can at least tell myself I tried my best right there were certain modules that I did that I genuinely thought I was gonna get an A plus in because I genuinely enjoyed them and I tried my hardest and I didn't I didn't get an A plus I didn't even get an A in some of them some of those I actually ended up getting a B and I was a bit upset because I was like I actually liked that subject in comparison to some of the other ones that I did better in but I at least could tell myself that you tried your best and you didn't give up so you can pat yourself on the back for that there is no more that you can do than your very best so refuse to do anything less than your best and do not allow yourself to give up despite the temptation that will come and yeah the very last thing I would do is I would schedule my study and I had a study timetable this came in more so around exam time though it wasn't really for the duration of the year I tried to study for like maybe four or five hours in a day basically what I did is in the same way I have a lecture timetable I slotted in study slots within that time like within that timetable so if I had something from 10 to 11 and then another lecture from 12 to 1 I would put a study slot in from 11 to 12 and I would do that to, for the duration of the day until like maybe 6 o'clock because I decided I didn't want to study after 6 o'clock unless I wanted to do a night study like a night time study session but yeah schedule your study treat it as if it's your lectures and attend it like it is your lectures like attend it very seriously and yeah guys that's all the tips that I have for you I really hope this is helpful for you guys especially you guys who are entering the academic year starting now September October whatever whether you're watching in 2021 2022 whenever I hope this is helpful for you I hope that you can take some tips from this the spiritual tips and the practical tips and apply them to your life if any of these work for you comment below let me 
me know if you decide to apply this to your final year let me know how it goes at the end of the year if you see an improvement in your grades or anything like that and if you guys want more academic videos uh, i don't know if i want to do them but if you want more <laughs> Don't feel shy to let me know because I will consider it and think about it. And yeah, I'm so happy that you got to the end of the video if you did because I know it's a pretty long one, but I think it will benefit you if you actually decide to take on the different tips. And yeah, so I'm so glad to spend time with you guys, even though it's through a screen and I love you guys forever. I wish you guys an amazing day. If you enjoyed the video, please like it, comment, share, and please subscribe, join the family, whatever. <laughs> and yeah, um, I'll see you guys in the next video and have an amazing week. Bye.